So you're ready to jump into the world of startups. Great, you're in the right place. We're doing a deep dive into the entrepreneur's journey today. We're going to cut through all the noise and get right to the essential stuff you really need to know. Yeah, let's break it down. The entrepreneur's journey has a ton of advice, but something really valuable they emphasize is understanding the startup ecosystem, like as a whole. I'm all about avoiding all the jargon, though. So in reality, what does that even mean? Like, is it really just as easy as find a problem, solve a problem? Well, that's the classic advice, right? But the entrepreneur's journey goes a little bit deeper, digs a little deeper. It's not about finding just any problem. It's about finding a problem that, like, speaks to you personally. Yeah. It's you know, something that you actually really care about solving. Yeah. It's like the Airbnb story. Like, they didn't start out wanting to, like, completely change hotels, did they? It came from them having an experience, a real relatable experience. Yeah, exactly. They saw a need during like a conference or something, a simple problem, finding a place that was affordable to stay. And then their solution kind of came from that. But that being said, even if you have a great idea, even if it's from personal experience, yeah, validating that idea is like really important. Yeah, you got to make sure people actually want it. You can't just assume they do. Right. The Entrepreneur's Journey talks about the importance of market research. Talk to your audience, get feedback, and even be ready to make a change if your idea just isn't working. Don't get married to the solution, right? <laughs> Marry the problem. Speaking of trying things out, the podcast talks about the MVP, that minimum viable product. Is that where testing comes in? Yeah, exactly. It's about not trying to make everything perfect right away. You want to focus on getting a really basic version of what you're doing in front of users as fast as you can. It's like a test run then. Before you open a restaurant, you're going to want to have your friends try the food, get their feedback. You wouldn't serve a dish that wasn't ready to a paying customer. Right. The entrepreneur's journey uses the example of Dropbox. They didn't start with a super complex platform. Their MVP was literally just a video showing the idea. And it worked. It got people excited. It's crazy how something so simple can be so powerful, especially for figuring out if an idea is good. OK, so say we've got this killer idea now. We've tested it out and we know people want it. Then what about the team? You can't build a company all by yourself, right? Oh, you definitely need a great team. The entrepreneur's journey talks about this a lot. Actually, a lot of venture capitalists will tell you that the team is just as important as the idea itself. That makes sense. You need skilled builders, even with the very best blueprint, to make that vision a reality. Yeah, for sure. And it's not even just about having the skills on paper, you know. The entrepreneur's journey really focuses on the importance of having a shared vision, a team that's on the same page about the why, not just the what. That shared purpose is super important, especially because startups move so fast. It's like that saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. But finding a team that works well together can be easy. It takes work, for sure. The podcast guests all recommend using your existing network first. People you've already worked with, those connections are super valuable. Yeah, because the trust and understanding are already there. But even with a great network, sometimes you just need someone with a specific skill set. Right. And that's where the entrepreneur's journey really emphasizes building your team strategically. You need to understand not just who you need, but when. Maybe you're like a tech genius, but you need someone who understands marketing. Knowing when to bring in those key people can completely change the game. It's like putting a puzzle together. You need all the right pieces, all fitting together perfectly to get the full picture. OK, so now you've got your team, a good idea. What about money? Startups aren't known for being cheap, are they? Well, that's where things get really interesting. The entrepreneur's journey actually breaks down all the different ways you can get funding. And there's no right answer, really. It all depends on you and what you're trying to do. Yeah, I bet. It's a whole other world to figure out. You've got bootstrapping. You've got angel investors, venture capitalists. It's easy to get lost in all the options. It definitely can be. Let's start with bootstrapping, which basically means you're funding your own startup. It's all about starting small, using your own resources to get going. Uh, the best part about bootstrapping, and the podcast talks about this, is that you are totally in control of your company. You don't have to answer to any investors. It's your vision, done your way from the very beginning. But I'm sure it's got its own challenges. Of course. Growing might be slower, and you might have to get a little creative with your resources. But the entrepreneur's journey has so many inspiring stories about companies that were bootstrapped and became super successful. Those stories are awesome. But I'd imagine for some startups, especially if they're trying to grow really fast, that getting outside investment is basically essential. Absolutely. The entrepreneur's journey has a whole episode on the different kinds of investors. 
There are angel investors who are usually just people who are really passionate about startups and they're willing to invest their own money early on. They're like the fairy godmothers of the startup world making dreams happen. Laughs. Yeah. Yeah. And they can be incredibly helpful, especially at the beginning. But then you've got venture capitalists who usually come in a little later and they're looking for companies that have the potential to grow super fast. And usually when you get VC funding, there are different expectations too, right? Those investors are trying to get a big return on their investment. Yeah, for sure. The entrepreneur's journey actually talks about how VC funding can have downsides too. You might have to give up some control of your company, deal with board meetings and investor expectations. It can change things a lot. Yeah, it's definitely a trade-off, but sometimes it can really help a company succeed. The entrepreneur's journey had that cool story about that food delivery app, right? They started as just a small team working in a garage, and then they became this huge company worth billions of dollars in just a few years. Yeah. And it was partly because they got VC funding. Yeah. It shows how getting the right funding at the right time can be huge. Yeah. But the entrepreneur's journey also makes it clear that even if you have the money, growing a startup still has its challenges. It's not always easy. Even if you've got plenty of money, I imagine things can get pretty crazy when a company grows really fast. Totally. One of the most important things a podcast talks about is that growing too quickly can actually be just as bad as not growing at all. It's like if you tried to build a giant skyscraper on a foundation that was only built for a small house. Yeah, it's about finding the right balance. You need to grow in a way that makes sense so you make sure you can actually handle the growth. Right. And that means you need to plan carefully and actually do what you planned. The Entrepreneur's Journey talks about how important it is to set up systems early on, like using tools for project management or software for tracking your finances. Things that might seem kind of extra in the beginning, but they become super important as the company gets bigger. It's about setting yourself up for success right from the start, even if it seems a little early at that point. Exactly. And since we're talking about important things, we can't forget about managing your finances. The Entrepreneur's Journey has a whole episode on this. Cash is king, right. <laughs> or queen. I can see how easy it would be to get so focused on building your product that you forget all about the numbers. Yeah, it's a common mistake. The podcast talks about this idea of burn rate, which is basically how fast a company is spending money. Yeah. Understanding your burn rate is super important, especially when you're just starting and you might not have a lot of money coming in yet. So it's not just about how much money you have, but how long you can make that money last, depending on how much you're spending. It's like planning a long road trip. You've got to know how much gas you're using, how far you can go before you need more. That's a great analogy. And just like on a road trip, there are always unexpected costs that can pop up. The entrepreneur's journey really emphasizes having some money saved up, like a safety net, in case something unexpected happens. Like an emergency fund, but for your company. So we've talked about a lot today. We talked about finding the right idea, building a team, figuring out how to get funding, and dealing with the challenges of growing a company. If someone's starting their own business, what are some of the most important things they should remember from the entrepreneur's journey? That's a really good question. I think one of the most important things, and they talk about it a lot in the podcast, is that you have to be okay with failing. I mean, obviously, no one wants to fail, but it's almost guaranteed to happen at some point when you're starting a business. The important thing is to learn from your mistakes. Like that Thomas Edison quote, everyone loves it. I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Exactly. It's about being willing to learn and try again, maybe doing things a bit differently the next time. Another super important thing is networking. Now, I know some people don't really like that word. Yeah, it can feel kind of forced, like you're just trying to collect business cards and hoping something good will come of it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But the entrepreneur's journey talks about how important it is to build real relationships with people in your industry, like mentors, people you work with, even investors. Those relationships can really help you, especially since starting a business can be tough. It's like having a support system, a group of people who understand what you're going through because they've been there too. Mm -hmm. Because building a startup can be lonely, that's for sure. You're telling me. And because of that, another thing the podcast talks about is the importance of taking care of yourself. It's true. You can get so caught up in the excitement, working long hours, always trying to be successful, that you forget to take care of yourself. Exactly. And that's a recipe for burnout. The entrepreneur's journey reminds you that taking breaks, making sure you're healthy mentally and physically, isn't selfish at all. It's really important if you want to be successful in the long run. Like they say, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? You need to take care of yourself so you can be the best leader possible. 
Okay, so, so far we've got being okay with, failing, networking, taking care of yourself. What else? The entrepreneur's journey also talks about how important it is to be able to adapt. The startup world is constantly changing, so something that worked in the past might not work anymore. The only constant is change, right? Right. You got to be able to change your strategy, make adjustments, maybe even make a huge change in direction if you need to. That's what separates the successful entrepreneurs from the rest. It's all about being open to new information and ideas. You have to be willing to let go of things that aren't working, even if you put your heart and soul into them. It takes guts to walk away from something you've put your all into. But sometimes that's really the best thing you can do. Yeah, definitely. The Entrepreneur's Journey has a really interesting episode about making those big changes. And they tell some amazing stories about companies that totally switched gears and ended up being super successful. It reminds you that there's no one right path to success. It's about being open to whatever happens, right? All the unexpected turns along the way. Speaking of journeys, one thing I noticed in the entrepreneur's journey was how much they emphasized having a purpose. Oh, absolutely. It comes up all the time. Successful entrepreneurs are driven by more than just money. They really care about solving a problem or making a difference, even if it's just in a small way. And that passion is so powerful, isn't it? It's what draws people in, investors, customers, really talented people. Totally. It's that fire that keeps you going when things get tough. And let's be real, the entrepreneur's journey doesn't pretend it's all easy. It's not all fun and games, right? Building a company from the ground up is tough. Long hours, setbacks, self-doubt, it all comes with the territory. Oh, for sure. And that's why it's so important to build a strong support system, just like the podcast guests always say. Surrounding yourself with mentors, advisors, and other entrepreneurs who understand the struggle can make all the difference. Having that group of people you can trust and who get it can really be a lifesaver when things get tough. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about passion, resilience, support systems, anything else our listeners should know before they set off on their own entrepreneurial adventures. The Entrepreneur's Journey leaves us with this thought-provoking question. How do you want to impact the world? It's easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day stuff when you're building a business, but don't lose sight of the bigger picture, the reason you're doing all of this in the first place. It's about finding that perfect balance between loving what you do, having a 